Hi guys. Crazy. All right, so guys, today we're gonna do some meal belly strategies and attacks. I'll show you the first one. It's gonna be a, a beauty. Anyways, guys, welcome to episode 40. I wanna know who's 40 out of 40 club. All right, so start writing that down. I'd be lying if I said I'm looking for the, forward to the next 40 episodes. <laughs> I am looking, I love doing every episode, but I'm looking forward to the day when we go back to the monthly. Not too long. So guys, without further ado, let's look at some of the neon belly strategies and what does that mean? So since Enrique came out dressed wrong, so the first one we're gonna do is the monkey jump, double knee on the belly. It's something like this. <laughs> okay. All right, I strongly encourage you to use it. <laughs> With a possible fist on the throat. Okay, so <laughs> let's get back to seriousness. Guys, uh, there's a couple of different things when we have knee on the belly. I, I think most of you are familiar with the traditional knee on the belly where we were taught, you know, flare out our leg to have a good base. If I need you guys, rather than base, if he bumps forward, I want to base on his shoulders. So I want to hang a little bit back. I also want to make sure there is no space between my instep or my ankle and his body. So most of you are familiar with this, all right? Um, what we're going to do from here, uh, I also want to talk about a knee on the belly where you bring your, you shift your weight. All right, but first, let's go over a very interesting arm lock, and it's almost like a throwaway submission. It doesn't cost you position, and it may work. Is if I have the traditional knee on the belly, and I, and he's trying to push, I'm going to slide my shin up. All right, and my foot is going to go under his shoulder, so you can see this. Right? And I just take a quick arm lock. Okay. Now, what's the reason is it doesn't cost you anything. So say you do this and you fall off. And he retracts his arm so you cannot get the arm lock. When that happens, guys, you switch your legs like this. He needs to tuck his arm in to be able to get up. So in order for him to get up, he needs to have this tucked in. Now he can get up. By the time he gets it back tucked in, I'm gonna just get back and I'm back in a dominant position, okay? So anytime I put my knee on the belly, I'm always watching out. I think most of you are familiar with the far side arm lock where, you know, the guy pushes on the knee, you know, but high level guy's not gonna do that. Uh, fundamentally, yes. Anytime somebody pushes, I'm taking the far side arm lock. We work quite a bit on that, so I'm not gonna spend a lot of time, I think, it's more interesting, especially is, is, is the near side. So I'll go under his armpit. We have a quick arm on. If he were to retract, I just split my legs. And by the time he tucks his elbow back in, where he could possibly escape, I'm already back in a dominant position. And I'm back for round two. <laughs> and we just keep going. And I'm back. If you notice, it's kind of interesting because when I come back, I'm coming back from the only belly again, but very different positioning. I'm no longer, I don't no longer have my left foot on the ground to bring my knee. Can somebody tell me what that does and why am I doing this? Because if you can't, I will tell you, but I'd be interested to know what people think. Waiting for the replies to come in. A lot of people checking in in the 40 club. Nice. 40 out of 40. We may need somebody that's good electronically to start making 
uh, 40 out of 40 uh, certificates. Adolfo Feranda says increased pressure. 10 SRS ask you to repeat the question, please. Okay. So let's, so this is traditional uh, knee on belly, where basically most of my weight is in my shin, which he's carrying. Now, I want to make sure I'm across sort of the diaphragm. So this is where I want to be positioned. I don't want to be too low. I want to be roughly here because it starts to constrict his breathing. Anytime he reaches for, I'm going to go for an arm. Okay? Now, I kick my leg through so he cannot retract his right arm very easily. By the time he retracts it, I'm already back in a dominant position. But this time, I'm putting my knee on the belly by my left leg rather than the foot being on the ground, his knee on the ground. So my question is, what does that do and why am I doing it? Why are you guys thinking about it? I'm going to choke you. <laughs> 10 SRS says uh, to trap his arm. Billy Tanner says choke. And lots of peers says you can try a baseball bat choke or go for the arm bar. Kanai Kiyoshi says better defense. Iron Republic says stops uh, Ashigarami entrances. Acoustic Jaybird says makes the escape more difficult. And Steve Rogola says uh, prevents a sweep. So a lot of uh, a lot of good, good, good answers there, uh, or some good answers there, <laughs> but still A for effort, uh, even if you didn't quite get it, but yes, guys, it's one of the very interesting things. Is, so basically what it does is if my foot is on the ground, most of my weight is on him. My foot goes down, my knee goes down, my weight starts to shift off him. This make, it makes it diff, more difficult for him to bump me forward and enter into my legs. So if he, try, if, he, if he does this, bumps me forward, yeah. Now I have to defend. Say hello to my little friends, <laughs> two of them. Okay, now, just keep turning. When my knee, when, when my knee is down, it's much harder to bump me forward because most of my weight is, is already in, on the ground, so I'm much harder to, to bump forward. So sometimes there's a benefit to not having your weight on him. The other thing is, anytime you lighten up, I know he's gonna be turning to me. So you kind of almost give the guy a cue to move, knowing that he's gonna move. He's, what most people will do is they, yeah. They're gonna shrimp and move and turn. So if you are interested in that far side on lock, so now I have to set up. Okay? So anytime you decide to do this, you might as well tell the guy, turn towards me and shrimp. Okay? So a lot of times when I'm on top, I will lighten up. And here we go. Okay? So it's almost you telling him what you want him to do. While we were here, <laughs> it actually reminded me, um, since we have the gear on today, uh, let's do, guys, this is an old school uh, choke. Um, it's, it's a bit brutish, uh, mangles the guy too, but also it's one of those things doesn't cost you position even if it doesn't work. So again, I'm on top, and I decided to, so this has a lot of weight, this has less weight, all right? I'm gonna slip my knee, Notice how the grip that I have on every day. So I have thumb in, and I just bring my leg over. All 
right? So all you're doing is just draw, you straighten out your arm and drawing your leg back. Guys, this is an old school choke. I learned this from Henzo, man, maybe 25 years ago. Uh, it, it works well. And the best part is if you can't get him, you can fairly easily recover top of cross side. So it's, it's actually nice if you're in a dominant position and you have these, like that arm lock on the, we did on the other side or this choke, it's, they're nice submissions where if they don't go according to plan, you keep your dominant position. It's pretty nice. All right, so let's look at that choke again. All right, so I have knee on the belly. I start out, I drop it. I'm, my grip is already in. I step over and just start to draw his head, head back. My arm is straight. Now, should this not work, maybe your grip is, is weak, just, just let it go and say hello to my new little friend. All right, guys? So, do we have any questions on this stuff so far? Or special requests? You guys want to see the monkey jump? Double knee on the belly again? <laughs> we have uh, some check-ins from California, Holland, uh, Canada, Malaysia, Phoenix, and... A question that we have is uh, from Masij Pap. He says, um, my question is, would you also go for the armbar if he wants to get your knee across? No, would you? Yeah, would you also go for the armbar if he wants to get your knee with his arm across his body, bump and hip escape away? I would go for guillotine or slept or anaconda. So if he kind of, what he's doing is basically just kind of ignoring the knee on the belly and, and just coming up. If, that, if, if that's the case, it's not gonna be super fast. He's just gonna be basically grab the leg and start turning. If he does that, I will wrap the neck and drop in for Either arming guillotine or, and then if, with the gi, I would, I would quickly aim to switch into anaconda because with the gi, because of the friction, so, so it's, it's harder to finish a guillotine, but it's, it's, this transition to anaconda is very smooth. So he starts. All right, I hope that we interpreted your question correctly. So. And another question is from GM Baseball on YouTube. He says, when you go for the arm bar from top, what if he grabs your head with his legs? So you know, he tapped under pressure, not on the arm lock. <laughs> yeah. Because I was marching into it. <laughs> and DCAMS K on YouTube says, can you show additional detail for the far side arm bar? What is your backup plan, et cetera? Uh, well, the backup plans, we went over that, right? When we talked about the arm locks. I think we did. So let's let's quickly review, but there is an episode. I don't remember which one it is. <laughs> that uh, went over it. Uh, we're talking about the you know angles, grips, fulcrum, and follow-ups. So if I fail with the so. So I'll bring my weight down, spin around. So I first adjust the angle, adjust the fulcrum. If Enrique starts to spin out, I can still stop him here. If he gets too far, I've switched into Ophana. So basically, 
if he manages to get perpendicular to the ground, I'm switching. Up until then, I will change the angles and change the fulcrum to finish the arm lock. So I, first thing I do is switch my grip, the joystick grip. And then I will, you know, because that's a quick switch of angles and fulcrum. I will continue to push against my inner thigh. The minute he gets perpendicular, not the minute, but split second he's perpendicular, I'm switching to old plata. But that's covered in greater detail, I forget which episode. Guys, uh, there's, everything is on, on my, my personal page. It's not uh, labeled as far as techniques covered. On the Academy page, so it's Silver Fox Brazilian Jiu Jitsu Academy and Silver Fox BJJ Butler, it's labeled for the techniques and it stays there. It's also on YouTube where it's also labeled. The only thing is, for whatever reason, we could not upload episode one and two to YouTube, and episode 24 got compromised, got submitted. <laughs> somehow by YouTube. So episode 24 for some reason is not working. We're gonna go over some of the points of 24, but 24 is on Facebook, okay? Uh, it focuses on backstep. And Do you have any other questions? We yes, we have a few more questions. On Instagram, Alfie Solomons asked, uh, with that choke uh, with the bottom leg, is it applying pressure to the arm towards the head? Karate, but it's one karate. So it's, it's just, it's a very simple choke. So, so we start knee on the belly. Usually when, when knee on the belly does, guys, it brings the guy's head up. So if, I want his, if his head is down, knee on the belly brings his head up, I get my grip, slide off, and now I'm in position and I just basically start to draw his head slowly. Guys, you should do this slowly because once you're there, uh, you want to make sure that you know you don't adjust your training partner's neck. Uh, that's not the point. The point is to make it pat, not to make him turn like this tomorrow. And Piotr uh, Zawatsky on Facebook asks, could you go over the transition from knee on belly to mount? Yeah, that's good too. That's a good question. So. If I'm going knee on the belly and I'm, I decide to mount, um, usually I don't. I just change. It. First of all, you have to change your weight, so you can't. You can't have your weight because then you're not mobile. So what I'll do is I'll start to cha transition my weight, but make my hips very heavy. I lead with the knee, and as soon as my leg comes out, comes across. I start to work about, now I'm more worried about controlling his head and controlling his, his upper body with my body position. Guys, this is a good drill for, for you to, to, to do because sometimes you have to dismount or switch which side. So a lot of times this is a good drill to switch in your legs when you turn this way. So if I have a knee on the belly, Oh yeah, and baseball pad chokes there all the time. So again, I decide to mount. Um, if I decide to mount, guys, it's important also to, for me to try to control the head. All right, so as I'm bringing my knee across, I'm controlling his head. I don't need to hold on to it, I don't need to choke him. I just need him to not be able to, as I'm transitioning, trip to shrimp so now he can put me in Ashi ground. All right, so. As I'm transitioning, I'm controlling his head. If I need to, if I start to feel the leg that's behind is going to be scooped up, I just transition all the way through to the other side. All right? And Egadijis, uh, uh, Ruska on Facebook, says, nice armbar, but always when I'm trying to do that the person and I always try to do that person from bottom blocking my leg for me it's hard to pass the leg any advice yeah. 
Get his arm down with your shin, the baseball chest choking. choking. So it's, it, that's a very kind of interesting point. Is if if he's trying to push up, I'm gonna arm lock him. Okay. If he starts to bring his arm down, no problem. I'm gonna pin his arm, and now I'm gonna change the submission. And a special request from Anand Loves Jiu Jitsu says uh, for setting up baseball bat choke, I believe they mean paper cutter from north south, one hand under the armpit, the other hand on the far side collar. Uh, for the finishing, we move to side control. Yeah, that's bread cutter or paper cutter choke rather than baseball. So, what is the question? Uh, if you could show uh, setting it up from north south and then finishing in side control. Um, I wouldn't set it up from north south. I would set it up from from side control. Uh, from north south, uh, uh, we went over sort of the attacks. Uh, we actually did we do two days on that. Yeah, I think it was yesterday and the day before. From north south. Yeah, yeah. So we went over some attacks from north south. I will usually not set up baseball bat or bread, uh, bread cutter slash paper cutter choke from north south. I will usually set them up from side control. There is better attacks from north south that we went over actually two days, yesterday and the day before, so it'll be episode 38 and 39. Finally, I got some reference to, to episodes right. <laughs> it's recent memory, so. And we also have a lot, of, uh, a lot of people from the Academy watching, including Joe McManus, Renee. Hello. We also have Chris Temponi, Chris. Shu, Crash, Eric Darnstead. Shu. Nicole. I can't, I can't keep up with all of you. Raji, we have a lot of people. It's I was awesome. I say hi to every, everybody individually, but I can't keep up with the names. So I, <laughs> hi to everybody, guys. So let's move on. Um, the other thing, the other need on belly strategy is we talked a little bit about it in episode 24. So again, if you need episode 24, it's talking about backstep. And it's talking about backstep from the guy's knees. It talks about backstep from... You know, belly and talks about backstep when you're pretty high up on top of cross side and the guy's trying to switch into, come up into a single, uh, single leg. Uh, so you can actually watch episode 24, but it, that one, I think it's uh, compromised on Facebook. So guys, sometimes when I'm passing guard, oh, I forgot, we were going to do a takedown. We can do it. So sometimes, you know, if I'm passing and the guy's got good recovery, I just bring the wrong knee on the belly ball. And I, I actually like this. It's not wrong. It's just not what we traditionally think about knee on the belly. The reason is I'm trying to cut off his hip movement before he puts me in guard. If I, as I'm passing through and if I waited to bring the correct one, by then his hips are too far and now I'm dealing with the other side you know, now I have, now I can go the other way, but maybe that's not going to happen. So sometimes if I get through his legs, I just put the, the opposite knee on the belly. Now, I'm going to back step, and this is like a lottery. Uh, am I going to get both arms, one arm, or no arm? But, Unlike the lottery, you win in each case. We're gonna go over that, okay? So, I put the knee, wrong knee on the belly to just kind of cut off his hip movement. And as soon as that happens, guys, I'm backstepping. If I get both arms, I'm going straight into an arm lock. So, backstep, grip, and go. All right? Long knee on the belly, back step, and go. All right? Now, sometimes you only get one arm. If that's the case, I'm going to bring my knees. So ideally, I'd like to close the triangle. It may not happen. If I were to try to change into a straight triangle, a high level guy in this in this transition is gonna he's gonna escape. So what I'll do is 
I'll make it pretty much impossible for him to, to escape. I'm going to try to lock up while I'm still on top of him. But you can see my lock up is not very good. So I will just lock him up. Usually if I catch people in a reverse triangle, it's as good as done. So if I know, if I'm highly confident I'm going to be able to reverse triangle them, I will, uh, I will try to, if, if I can finish with the arm on top, I will. If I can't, I'll, I'll take, uh, there's not a lot of risk that I will be able to lock it up. My feet are pretty much, everything is already set up in place. All right? So again, this time we only got one. So right now, it's almost as good as if I can sort of try to finish him with a key lock or anything of that nature, great. So, if I get both arms, I'm going for an arm lock. If I get one arm, I'm going for either reverse or straight triangle. Whichever angle he gives you, take whatever he's giving you. Either one is good. Now, I get no arms. Or, the scissor. Yeah, this might be worse. I should have stretched. <laughs> All right, guys. So again, unlike the lottery, there's three possible outcomes: two arms, one arm, no arm. You win in either case. All right. So let's look at it again. Oh, I got. No arm. Or one arm. And no arm. <laughs> and, uh, the question asked by a lot Sapir and Iron or BJJ is, can they stop your leg uh, as you're backstepping? Uh, of course they can, but it's very difficult because usually it's, it's a very unorthodox attack. So people get surprised by it, very much so. I've used, I've used it against Enrique a lot. You know, probably the most common outcome is he, he, he gives me the the no arms. That's probably the most common outcome. Because that probably gives him the best chance to try to fight out of it. But it's uh, it's very difficult. So let's just, I'll, I'll do this for the guard pass. If you do this fast, it's it's so unexpected, it's, it's sort of hard to block. So. It, it, you guys can, you know, it's, it's very, very difficult. This was a little more brutal finish, just because he had a chance to turn a little bit to the side, but it still works. But you can see how fast that transition is. So it's very, like I said, it's it's rare that you stop the leg. It's most often he's small, you know, he, he knows where I'm going. And there's usually he just goes double under, and that's Enrique's preferred way to to deal with it. That's probably the least likely one to get finished with. And Jess asks, do you prefer trying to stay mounted as best as you can or allowed to go to your back? No. Guys, uh, you gotta understand that when you mount it, it's an extremely dominant position in some respects. Uh, so obviously, you know, in most tournaments, you get four points for this. It's a very dominant position, especially if I'm 
if I'm going to unload. But you know, I want to try to isolate something quickly for for a submission. But a lot of times, it's, you know, if you got especially if you got somebody bigger or stronger than you, is if I if I if I stay here and I'm trying to you know get something isolated. Yeah, turn. Yeah, it's 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 pretty easy for him to turn me. So now. She specified for the mounted triangle that you did with the back oh, step. Oh, for the mounted triangle? All right. Uh, yeah, let me finish this train of thought. So guys, when you mount it, make something happen. Don't just kind of sit there, try to figure out what you're gonna do because an explosive guy will turn you quickly and next thing you know, he's in your guard. And especially in MMA or self-defense, even if you're in somebody's guard, now you can just posture up and start hitting them. All right, but in the mounted triangle, uh, I would try to lock it up as quickly as possible. So, or, or finish. So if, if say, I'm, I'm here, and I get a mounted triangle, uh, what I, would, I wonder, if I can uh, grab my shin, I have, I, I would, right now, I wouldn't try to stay on top. Now, if I'm here, and I lock it up, yes, I would try to stay on top. Make him, make him put the effort in. They will turn you. It's almost, go ahead, turn. But, so if I can lock it up, if I'm completely secure in that position, yeah, stay mounted, make them, make them turn you, because if they turn you, it actually gets worse for them. But make them do the effort. But if, um, uh, generally speaking, I'm, I'm going to work my game to make my position more secure. As he's trying to escape, don't forget, if he turns you, he's exposing in his neck. So let him do the work for you. Don't dismount on your own. Let him, make him put the effort in. Because it's going to make your submission a little bit, a little bit more efficient. And two last questions before time is up. Uh, First, Iron Orr BJJ says, my name is Peter Orr. Professor and I were contemporaries with Danaher way back in the 90s at Henzo's. Nice. And as far as the two questions, Woodrow Carter on YouTube says, can you show a move that every white belt should know? I am finally able to start training soon and want to focus solely on BJJ. Focus on defensive aspects, how to escape bottom across cross side, uh, how to escape mount, uh, how to escape bad positions, and work your guard. There's not a single move. Uh, it's just, in, in everything, you know, whether you're talking about Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, whether you're talking about stand up arts, there is no single move that's absolutely critical. There is, it's a collection of moves that become important, and how do you string them together? Uh, one of the first things uh, when you're a white belt and you're starting out is be comfortable being uncomfortable. That, that's a very, very important thing. You know, usually, you know, when you're drilling with, with people and you're learning how, how to escape, uh, the minute somebody puts weight on you and you start to hyperventilate and start to bench press them off you, you've lost that battle. So try to focus on being comfortable being uncomfortable because if you're comfortable in uncomfortable situations, now you can think and then you can start to utilize the moves that you drill they may not be natural or, or second nature or automatic yet, but now because you're comfortable, you can sort of start to play with them and start to implement the things you've learned. And one last question. Uh, it's from Just Paranormal on YouTube. When rolling, how did you train yourself to be aware and conscious of always finding submissions from so many different angles? I think it goes to sort of how you train. Um, I have a, a, a weekly routine, which sometimes goes out the window, but uh, usually, and right now it's, it's completely different because of, of, the, of the virus, but uh, normally I train, depends how banged up I am. Uh, I, I usually train hard on Mondays, because usually I go to Henzo's, I usually train with one of my guys before, before John's class and then you know, whoever during the class. And then I teach a bunch of classes. Tuesday, uh, I usually make it uh, a medium day. 
uh, because usually we have, we're open seven days a week normally under normal circumstances. I usually, on Sundays could be a medium to hard day depending on who I get and <laughs> how, how we feel. <laughs> usually I might have an intention to have a medium day but it winds up hard. But So usually Tuesday is medium. Wednesday and Thursday usually light. Friday medium to hard. Saturday could be easy to medium, sometimes hard. Sunday, Sunday becomes usually I try to aim for medium to hard. So usually I need to have at least two or three hard training days in a week. It may not be the same days, but that's what I aim for because I can have three hard training days in a row and still be okay. If you push four or five, that's I start to break down. Then you basically just try to worry about surviving rather than actually doing the stuff you're supposed to be doing. But when I'm, even if it's a hard day, I usually start out, we, you know, especially with Erika, we start out, like, we, we increase the intensity, but we start out kind of slow. So if you look at the, the narrated role with, with Enrique, it's, it's on YouTube, I, I forget when we put it up, it's, it's, it's labeled. You could see that initially we just start basically, for lack of better words, screwing around, like, you know, like, you know, it's, look at a bear. When a bear is born, or wolf, they screw around with their, with their, with the other puppies, and you know what they're doing is actually learning how to fight, how to bring down prey. That's so you know we fart around, we screw around, we just kind of like, oh, here's an arm lock. You play around with things, and you kind of see things. When the intensity goes up, at that point you go more to autopilot, where basically it's 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 already inside your brain or inside your body or hopefully both, and you just know what to do without even thinking about it. So you have to build up to it. But I think the, a good way to build up to it is to flow roll and, and, and uh, sort of look for things, and you're still at an intensity where if you make a mistake or if you go for the wrong, wrong arm uh, and your training partner capitalizes on it, the punishment is not too severe. When you go on high rate and high intensity, especially with somebody you're somewhat competitive with, uh, when you do that, you better be on autopilot. You better know exactly what you need to do in those. So that's how you sort of, uh, I think, condition your body and, and mind to, to act upon opportunities that it sees, on a, a literally on an instantaneous basis. They really liked your uh, wolf analogy. <laughs> the bear, not so much. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, so it looks like we're out of time. Guys, if you're 40 out of 40, write it down. Even if you, doesn't matter whether you watch it live or you watch it later because you had to work or because you had something to do. All right, guys, I appreciate you tuning in. We'll see you tomorrow for episode 41, 10.30 a.m. Eastern time. Stay well, take care of others, be considerate. See you tomorrow.